Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy, with another special guest. And I put the emphasis on the word special guest on the Gratitude Podcast interview today regarding the pandemic. And I was thinking when I invited Dig Vijay that he and I met several years ago, and a, a mutual friend said, You guys are both talking about gratitude. And so I think you two should meet. And we met, and sure enough, it was like two gears meshing, just a fantastic young man, and uh, therefore the guest on the show today, Digvijay Shahan. Digvijay, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, David. It's, an, it's a privilege, and you know, you're, you inspire me in many ways, so I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the, 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 uh, it's true likewise as well. So let me start you out with this question. What has been the best coping, coping mechanism that you found to deal with this pandemic these last four or five weeks? Uh, the best coping mechanism. You know, I, I don't know whether, um, I, I, I don't see this as, and, and, and I'm not saying that you know, lots of people are going through a lot of hardship, but for me personally, mm -hmm. just having a roof over my head and having food on the table and one of the most amazing uh, families I could have ever uh, materialized or wished for or, or, or hoped for, you know, as long as your fam my family is around me and uh, life is life is is doing all all right compared to what a lot of other people in the world are going through. So uh, I'm I'm thinking more of what can I do to help rather than what uh, I need to do to cope. <laughs> Uh, I'm not so sure that answered your question. Sorry if I did. No, that's okay. But it doesn't surprise me given the fact that you and I have such a belief in gratitude and being grateful. And so much of that is focusing on what you have versus what you don't have. And, and let's face it, a lot of the news and the, the reports, everything we hear is all about what we don't have and people dying and death and uh, coronavirus and so forth. So it's, um, at some point, we've got to see a little bit of the glass half full and not go down that road. So, but let me ask you this in, in terms of being grateful. What are you most grateful for today? Is it different than four or five weeks ago? Is it the same thing? Has it changed since this pandemic hit? I, I really don't think it's changed. Maybe I, I had answered this question a year or two back when you asked me on the last interview and I don't recall exactly, but I think uh, the thing that I would say I'm most grateful for is this perspective by some that, that for some reason I seem to have ended up with where I can, I can just, I, I'm just so, so um, happy and grateful to have anything that I have. You know, I, I know I haven't done anything to deserve it. So, um, so I, I don't know if that answers your question again, no. but that remains to me. I'm always scratching my head trying to figure out how did I end up with this perspective? It, it really keeps you rooted in, I, I think, in joy and gratitude. And so that, that is really priceless. And that hasn't changed, David. That it, that it does. That it does. And, and let me ask you this. When you think about somebody, I know you pretty well, and you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of activities, a lot of balls in the air. You do a lot of things. You're very active in many, many different types of things. What, do you have a thought or a tip or an idea or something for somebody who's stuck at home or what they can be doing maybe during this pandemic and, and the fact that they're housebound? Any thoughts on what they could maybe be doing? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And I think one thing that we can all do is kind of be at, um, be more in connection with our own inner self. Who are we? Uh, and are we happy being with ourselves, our own inner being? Uh, and many of the wise uh, saints and many faiths and many of the philosophers who may be agnostic also tell us that some of the most profound questions are inside us. What is the purpose of life? Right. Uh, I think, I think um, uh, you know, those are the things that we now are able to ponder and, and uh, maybe spend a little bit more time on because mm -hmm. you're forced to in a way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are. It really does kind of force us that way. And kind of as a follow-up to that, again, being somebody who I admire, who's done a lot in your life and both personally as well as professionally, uh, what do you have kind of a thought in terms of even though it hasn't changed that much for you what you might be doing to sort of hit the ground running when this is over because we know it's going to end we don't know when 
and whether it's going to take a vaccine or how it's going to be in stages, as I said yesterday. But is there something you've thought about, boy, when this is over, I'm going to be able to kind of plan to do these things to get kind of a jump start on things? Uh, it's another great question. You know, I, um, uh, I, I tend to be a believer in the journey and just enjoying every day and being grateful for what you have. And again, I don't think this is something that I've done. Um, I think it's also a function of what we have a term in, in, my, in my native language called Sangat. Mm -hmm. Sangat roughly translates to community, your associations. So, you know, a, a lot of, I think, what we feel uh, inspired by depends on who we interact with. Right. And who are in our uh, circle of, uh, love or association or friendship. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I have a lot of people that I, I, I'm just amazed at how, how, who they are and what they do, you know, whether it is my mother in India. So I'll give you a small story. My father is a retired army, uh, Indian army um, officer, 80 plus years. And now he is, uh, has had Parkinson's for a long time. And just a few days back, we got news that he had developed a fever and we were very worried. You know, oh, most wow. of India is almost under a curfew-like situation. So here's a 70-plus-year-old lady taking care of an 80-plus-year-old man and running a farm in rural area. And now she has to decide what to do and it could have been anything. So, you know, she wow. ended up um, pulling resources together, taking him to a local nearby doctor had him uh, given some antibiotics didn't want to leave him there in the hospital brought him home arranged for a drip to be put home at home and recently just yesterday night i heard his uh, his white blood cell count was down which means everything is good the infection is under control and so when i look at her <laughs> and i look at some of the other people in my life i'm like i'm you know I'm not doing one hundredth of what they are doing, so I'm. I'm <laughs> it's kind of humbling. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, good answer. And last question: Do you have sort of what you would say is a quote or a mantra or sort of a belief that kind of guides you as we go through life? Something that's sort of overarching that describes uh, Dig Vijay's approach to to living or being on this earth that when you go through something like this, when it maybe is needed more than another time, but you have something like that that kind of guides you? You know, recently I I've, I've, uh, have something in my mind that has come into my consciousness. One of my, again, uh, well, a living guru I had uh, wrote this and he, he referred to it from somewhere. There's a simple two-liner that says, say what is kind, but not what is untrue and say what is true, but not what is unkind. Oh, I like that. I like that. So I, I That's well, it, it's something I need to be aware of because I, 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 I do need a little bit of restraint in what I say sometimes. <laughs> no, no, come on now. Oh man, that's true. I, I certainly know this as I've gotten older, the mistakes and the missteps and things still happen. It's just hopefully not as frequently. <laughs> that we learn over time. So yeah. well, listen, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being on this because this is the type of thing that I always help. I always hope that this helps people that if they even, oh, I like what that Dig Bizet Shohan said. That was neat. That was a neat comment. And I, I get to send them out to YouTube and, and uh, people have said, oh, I think that was a neat comment. And is it just what you said is a good example. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you so much, David, for what you are doing with your life. It's, I'm so grateful to you. There's so many other things you could be doing. You're such an amazing, competent, hardworking person, but you're, you've dedicated yourself to making other people's lives joyful and happy. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Fab. We will chat soon. Thank you for having me.